So I've been invited to speak about the communication between parents and children. And I'm here today with my beautiful and amazing daughter. She pretends that she's shy. That's why she didn't want to sit with me. Her name is Dade Oluwamu Obaromiwa Adeniye. Outgoing head girl, Green Springs College, um, School. Prom queen class of 2022. Author of the Calm Down book. Multiple award winner. And very humble child that the Lord has blessed me with. And then our facilities manager, Mr. Henry. Thank you for being with us for the past 10 years. And my husband sends his greetings. So we'll be bridging the, the parent-child communication gap. So I haven't seen the slides yet. That's the only thing I'm waiting for now. Is it up? Beautiful. Yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about. And I think I have 25 minutes, and it takes me about 25 minutes to put my key in the engine and begin to start. So I'll be firing on all cylinders. <laughs> you can ask me questions later, because I want to cover what God wants me to cover. So... We're going to be minding the gap. We're minding the gap. Why do we need to mind the gap? So we already know that there's a gap. So why do we need to mind that gap? If we don't mind the gap, we're going to fall as parents. Our children are going to fall if we do not mind the gap. It is an error. So the next slide. It is an error for us not to mind the gap. So those are the two important things that we need to know. And then we move on to the next one. Still, why? If we mind the gap, we are looking at the lifeline and the lifetime of our children. We are resonating with our children in a beautiful way. So that's the next slide. I wish I knew where the person was so that I can be doing... Okay. Uh -huh. So we're going to be resonating with our children. We're going to be on the same frequency. Our outcomes are going to be positive. And then it is God's will for us, which is very, very important. Next one. Many things that we do as parents... We like to shout. Any shouting parents online? Any shouting parents here? If you're online, just type it in. We like to shout because that is what we know. We've been shouted at, so we shout at children. But we still don't like to be shouted at. And that shouting does a lot to us. It's a strategy that we use to parent our children. We beat them. Any beaters in the house? Any beaters? Yeah. And maybe after this room beat again, Yeah. <laughs> And then shouting. A lot of these actions, they dehumanize our children. But somebody is going to quote to me now and say, spare the rod and spoil the child. Foolishness is born, is born in the heart of a child. We'll get to it, okay? When we are minding the gap and we are connecting with our children, we need to understand that, that it is X, but it is not Y. By that I mean, when we're parenting our children... And we're doing, for example, mini me on Instagram. That is not communication with your children. It will just get you likes. And they will say nice clothes and they will move on to the next one. That is where it ends. No matter how much you spend. Maybe some, one or two people will talk about it. Maybe one or two people will prepare them. But that is where it ends. Have you communicated with that child? It is not control. I am the mom. I am the dad. It is my house. We are eating beans today. When you get to your own house, you can be eating chicken every day. But right now, you cannot dictate to me what we do in this house. Anybody like that? I know. Fear, intimidation, bullying. It is not a strategy. And I'm going to break everything down as we go along. Next slide. Come on, mistakes continues. We are comparing. I had a friend tell me recently, um, both her children did amazingly well. She had twins in school. And they all had straight A's, this term. But one had all the A's and one B. I, I was like, oh my God. I was celebrating them. Beautiful, awesome, awesome. She said, it's hard not to compare though. I'm thinking, what else do you want? I mean, these children are doing excellent. All their grades are amazing. Even the difference between the A and the B was so marginal. She said it's hard not to compare. How many people find it hard not to compare your children? Do you find it hard? Comparing them to their friends and the achievements of people, even online people. Look at the Temita Temita, I think her name is that one, the Olympic thing. Uh, is she not your mate? But these children now are saying that, is that good, they're not your mate now? They are seeing all these kids now, all the things. Social media has exposed them. They now know. So when you say all those things, 
So many skits, so many memes about African parents. In fact, if you push hashtag African parents, the embarrassment that comes out. Are you an African parent? Is it something to even be proud of, being an African parent? We will decide at the end of this. That beating, that we keep beating the children, that judging, I knew you would do it. You know, criticizing them, condemning our children, embarrassing them. You know, you go to school, you talk to them anyhow, and you think it's cool. Something that you cannot accept, you do to your children. Now, for the people that will say the rod of correction, I wrote a book about the rod. One on one tips to curb the beating and shouting. It's available as an ebook, it's available as a physical book if you want it. Mr. Henry didn't bring them today. I wonder why. A lot of people like that scripture because they want to beat their children. They, they fight for it. If you see them online, they really fight. Why shouldn't we beat our children? I was beaten and I turned out okay. Why shouldn't I beat? Why shouldn't I? Even that alone is saying that you're not okay to me. The fact that you're fighting to beat. How can you be fighting because you want to beat? And you turned out okay because you have a house and a car. You have a wife or a husband. You have a job. That makes you okay. But we do not tell us that you are addicted to pornography. Eh? You don't tell us that you are addicted to social media. You don't tell them that in your 40s, you are still urinating in the bed. You don't tell them that you are sleeping with your uh, choir mistress or choir master or all those things that happen. But it turned out all right. With your nice wig, your nice car. Those things are coping mechanisms. In the church, they'll call them sin. But oftentimes, you're coping with them. Some people will go to their offices. They still have to masturbate before they can get on. But they turned out all right. Some children started stuttering at age 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Something that they were not doing. Because they had to cope with your shouting. They had to cope with your beating. Some people are beating their husbands today. Beating their wives today. Because they are coping with the trauma. The childhood trauma. That has been caused by their parents. That love them so much. And put them on Instagram. I can remember a very popular case that happened. Where a child was um, beaten in school. And it was quite unfortunate. And I was very close to the case. At that time I did a lot of research. And when I found one of the parents of the boys, I went to the page of the boy that was beating, beating and bullying another child. I went to the page of the mother, just, you know, checking it out. And, you know, pictures here and there, my wonderful son, my beautiful son, my cute son, all those type of things that you, we all do, yeah? It was there. But then the media has it now that your child is a bully or even a potential killer. Which version of the truth should we believe? A lot of parents are disconnected from their children. They don't know what is going on. They think they know. I've been there. I was a child before. Totally disconnected. The teachers will tell you that your child is doing something in school. You will say, my child cannot do that. You will get angry with the teacher. You won't talk to the teacher anyhow. And that's why I keep saying that parents and that cannot come to Leposh school. We are not looking for you. We are only looking for parents that want to discipline their children in love. We are not looking for parents that want to have problems in the school and put social media. No. We want emotionally intelligent parents. We want to get it right. And for the past 10 years, to the glory of God, we've been getting it right at Le Bosch School. Back to the rod of correction. Can you remember the rod of miracles in the Bible? Was it a violent rod of miracles? Can we remember thy rod and thy staff? They what? Oh, it comforts. I didn't know. I thought it was to be beaten. I thought it was to be beaten. And can you remember the sheep and the shepherd in the Bible? When the shepherd has a rod, what does it use? What does it do with the rod? To guide the sheep. But we is to strike. We want to hold on to that scripture because we want to beat. But it is very short term. The results are very, very short term. 
But somebody will still not buy what I'm saying. But I will still tell you that in that same Bible, in the book of Deuteronomy, read it from 20, chapter 21, 18 to 21. Essentially, the summary is that a rebellious child should be stoned to death. So shall we start gathering stones to start killing our children? You will not see that one in the Bible. Somebody will say, hey, Old Testament. This one too is Old Testament. Rod too is Old Testament. So argue with your Bible. This one is not argue with keyboard. Argue with your Bible. Because you want to beat. You will keep saying the rod of correction. Why don't you say the stone of death and start killing them? We ignore it. In fact, we pretend. So I'm sure people have read books of Deuteronomy. We have done Bible in a whole year. Over and over again. They will not see that part. Because there's deletion in the brain. There's a part of the brain that deletes what you don't want to know. There's a part of your brain that will delete what I'm saying now because you want to beat your children today. You will still delete this one upon all the things I'm saying. Because you don't want the truth. But the Bible says that the truth shall set you free. And the Lord will liberate us all in Jesus' name. So those are the books. If you desire to have them, you can find me on Ronke Posh. Most of everything I'm going to be saying are on my YouTube channel at Ronke Posh. You can get my resources, everything online. Understand this, the Bible says in the book of James 1.19. My dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen. Slow to speak. And slow to get angry. If we are slow to speak and slow to get angry, we will not have a lot of problems with our children. You know, Miss Issa was talking about um, people listening. We quickly assume we know what they're going to say. We can't wait. Eh, I, when you do that. We, we can't wait. As, as, and this thing must start when the children are small. You know when they're still babbling and saying rubbish and you don't have patience, you want to cook soup, you want to iron, you want to go to the market and this one is still saying, uh, mommy, I, I want you and my friend said and, uh, and you're thinking, don't say it now. Okay, you want sweets, take, take, take tablets. We don't want to listen. But we want God to listen to us, right? When we are babbling, when we are in trouble, when we can't even articulate our problems, we want God to listen. But we don't want to demonstrate the same thing to our children. Next one. Our children want to be heard. And we must do our best to hear them. In this generation, if you having, already have a Gen Z or Alpha Gen child, and you are not listening, is an error. There's a big problem. You have to find the time to listen. There's no outsourcing of parenting. If you like, go and get Filipino nanny from America. Go and get anybody. Nobody can take the place of a parent. Nobody. And where one parent is absent for whatever reason, you must find someone that is responsible enough to stand in the gap. They don't have to live in, with you. But the children also need role models. They need. No matter how strong a woman you are, you're a strong woman, you're raising four boys. Molegon. Find a responsible man that will stand in the gap and connect with them. You must start early. I mentioned it. The opinions of your children counts. It counts. Hear from them. What do we want to eat this night? Simple things like that. Oh, somebody, I said this somewhere, some, some place a while ago, and somebody said, hey, it's because you have money. And I thought, the way we think. I said, in my house, that day is here. If mommy tells lies, she will say, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> there are some times that mom, dad, and daddy were all eating different things. And it's not because of money. It could be as simple as a sandwich or a cereal. I'm the one that eats the bar all the time. Those ones are, <laughs> you know. It could be as simple as that. But sometimes you need choice. Even Montessori says children need choice. If you are teaching in a way, you must also understand that there are some children that will not assimilate it in the way you are teaching it. Some people cannot hear half of what I'm saying, not because their ears are, they are deaf, but they are already thinking, ah, I need to get to Ikeja this night. So, ah, that party I'm going to tonight. She should just hurry up, let me get the message. So they're not, half of the things I'm saying, they're not getting it. But they are getting this because it's sticking in their brains. 
Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? There are different ways of learning. Get your children involved in the decision making in your house. Simple things. Even if they're two years old. Would you like us to put this flower vase here? I hope you won't touch it when it's here. Or if I put it here, you touch it. So should we put it here? When you involve them in decision making, you are communicating, you are getting their buy-in. You are training them to partner with you as they grow up. You see, a lot of people want to relate with their children when they're already teens. It's not impossible, but it's almost too late. It's not impossible, but it's almost too late. You'll be mean, 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 mean. Authoritative, dictatorship. And all of a sudden, you want to be sweet mommy. And they don't trust you. They're thinking, hello. People don't trust you. What's, what happened to mommy? What did she eat? Which side of the bed did she get up? Before you know what happened, they go and do TikTok. My mom. <laughs> They're always laughing at us on TikTok. My daughter sends it to me all the time. And I'm thinking, I sometimes even ask her, Daddy, uh, is that me? <laughs> I just check. You have to check. Eh? Then your values in your family. What are your family values? Do your children know your family? As for age four, children are so bright these days. Age three, four, five. In simplistic ways, they should know your values. In our house, we don't tell lies. In our house, we don't look dirty. In our house, we always look nice and clean. And as, you, as they grow up, you build up. The vocabulary changes. We are people of integrity in this house. You can't tell you uh, the integrity. That's what happened. But you can tell them as they're growing up that is this who we... I tell that they... So if she does something or I do something... That, she, she, one day I was talking and she said... She said sometimes I said, how beat you? By the way, I don't beat that day. Please celebrate me. <laughs> so I said, I, I will beat you. She said, that goes against... Everything you have preached. I said, hey, let me. I will beat you one day. Hmm, that day? One day. She's 16 now. Hmm. So, lecturing, lecturing, lecturing. Our children don't like it. Only that day likes lecturing. Next one, mind the gap. How do we mind the gap? I have some tips to share. We must have mutual respect. I won't bang on about it. Dr. Issa has talked about that already. Ah, I said, Dr. Issa. Prophecy. Prophecy. Oh, you've done it. Wow, let's celebrate her. Relate. Maybe you need another one. Fellowship. <laughs> relatable. You must be relatable. Stop saying, oh, this, Gen, this Gen Z children, uh, this, I can't even understand what they are doing on this Snapchat. I don't know what they are doing on this TikTok. You don't have to be there and be doing all the things. But be able to engage them in the conversation. If they say, oh, someone sent a snap, you say, you know, you don't want to be that bush parent that they're ashamed of. They love you, but they may not be proud of you because you are acting like one mama or papa. You don't have to know the technical things, but be able to relate in their own language. Oh, if they come to tell me that, oh, these girls were suspended in school because they were strafing. I won't say, ah, what's strafing? You don't think they're strafing? I know. Okay, so I already I can see some people saying, which one is traffic again? No. <laughs> so you know that they are, they are touching each other in school. Yeah, maybe snuggling and kissing and all those sort of things. And they even have this slang per school as well. And they have different acronyms. Even when you enter the room, they, know, they have acronym. And you will look at it. I mean, many years ago, there was one where... Um, the parents will come into the room and if they suddenly see the chat. This is very old, by the way, this particular one. Give and it shall be given unto you, right? Press down, shaking together, running over. Mommy sees, ah, goes to daddy, omowa. Praise the Lord, our child is so wonderful. Praise the Lord! Huh? Give and it shall be given unto you. Give me blowjob, I will give you blowjob. Press down, shaking together means we will go all the way. That is what, what mommy has seen. She's, mommy is saying, I'm a Jesu. Don't let the children lose you. The acronyms are building up. In fact, they don't even write proper sentences. I always thought that you must be the only one that still writes good English. Maybe because your mother teaches. Because, in fact, I don't even know she's capable of doing it. I said, you, you just cannot write an acronym. I keep telling you, you are in a league of your own, daddy. You can't write like this. You can't be writing that. D-A-T, no, 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 no. I can't cope. 
But I will read messages from children that are from... <laughs> in fact, parents are slaving away. And you see the English that they write. And you think, oh my God. Did someone pay school fees for this? And I keep saying that they must never join. And that they, they must never join that. Yeah? We must not conform, like I always tell her, to the patterns of this world. But we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. On other tips, we have to be your authentic self. Stop trying to be somebody else. Story of the child who saw the mother online doing all sorts. And she's thinking, ah, is this the mother in the house and the mother? What's this? You're being hypocritical. You're supposed to be the best role model and their first role model. It shouldn't be the f- footballers and the musicians. Before their eyes open, if they say, who's your role model? They should be saying mommy and daddy. They shouldn't first say it's um, one celebrity out there. If they're not calling your name when they're younger, you have missed it somewhere. They start to call their parents, they start to call their teachers. So even if you're a teacher listening to this, if they're not calling your name, problem. Like Kiki would tell us. You have to be a parent partner, parent child partner with your children. You have to build rapport. In the presence of rapport, all things are possible. It is when you are laughing and playing that you can even solve your marriage problems. And it can also solve the problems with your children when, you're, when they see that you are friendly. Not when, that you, when you are angry, when you come, everybody has to scatter into their rooms. Who are you? Even the Bible, the God says we should come boldly. We should come to him. Let the children also come unto me. But your own children, when they see you, they scatter seven ways. Like they, you know how they said the demons will come out in seven ways. Haven't we missed it in different ways? There's, there are boundaries, there's respect, and there's outright fear. And we don't want fear in our children. The next slide says, the gentle answer deflects anger. But harsh words make tempers flare. Harsh words. It's how we say things. It's how we say things. If I say to, if I say to Pastor Sheun now, Pastor Sheun, please come. Do you mind coming? Oh, thank you. Please celebrate Pastor Sheung. Okay, Pastor Sheung, you can go back. You can go back and see. Thank you so much. Am I being polite? Okay. Pastor, uh, come, come, come. You, come back. Come here, John. I'm calling you. He, he doesn't even know which one. Is it polite? Please celebrate Pastor Sheung. But am I also saying the same thing? How you say it's me? Excuse me, please. I beg, come on for road. Is it not the same thing? And that's what we're doing to our children. What are you going to eat this nice? Get up, get up. It's time for school. Get up, get up. It's a soft answer. I always tell people, how do I wake I like that Ade is here today. Even though she didn't want to sit with me. And that's another example. When I sat in front, she didn't want all the attention. That doesn't like attention. I said, sit with me. She said, no, she's not. Mm. Attention on her. But she knows I've been doing it for many years, and she's my greatest example. That's the example. If I'm not living it, I can't preach it. So I must. She understands that part, but she doesn't like the, the come and sit in front, all those parts. She doesn't like it. So I, I respected the fact that she didn't want to sit with me. It doesn't mean she doesn't love me. She just doesn't want, ah, what am I doing? She doesn't want, that's who she is. So, a soft, so I was going to give an example of how I wake her up in the mornings. So in the mornings, I don't say that day it's time for school. It's not possible. It's not possible. <laughs> I can't say that day it's time for school. I can't wake up like that. I cannot say, get up. Oh, yeah, oh. Does, I, can anybody relate to those kind of waking up in the morning? Ah, I can see hands going up. I don't wake her up. I always recommend to people, you can wake her up the way I wake. That day always has a song in season. A gospel song, I will put it on. So she's not an early riser, so she will take her time. So if I want her to get up at 6.30, I will start at 6 so that we can arrive at 6.30. And that's part of the thing that happens. When we don't plan and understand our children, some people wake at 6.30 and expect like her to bounce out of 6.30 and finish for 7 o'clock when you're rushing to work and you do not pack the bag or do the homework. And start shouting in the mornings, cursing your children before they go to school. And then you will say they did not pass in school, that is the teacher. It is you. You have not blessed your child in the morning. So when she finally gets up, I will bless her. Before she leaves the house, I will bless her. There was a time we stumbled on 16 hogs. 
Eight on this side, balance it with eight on this side. And we were doing it. So if you think, oh, you have one child. Now you sabi. If you have four, you must do 16, 16, 16, 16 64, Abby. <laughs> That's what you are going to do. When you have more children, you have more work to do. You can't say you did it with one. I did it with the older ones. I'm tired. No, nobody sent you. If you like have a dozen football field, you must do the work or you reap the consequences. And God is going to deal with you. This is not the era of having mass production of children. They are too complicated, even for scientists. Because every time I listen to the br- talks about the brain, I keep wondering, okay, what kind of brain do you have? Because I'm always playing. As my own not developed all these years, I can't even wear suits to the school. I cannot. People will come for inquiry. I will say, you people should go. You know Nigerian people, if I don't wear suits, they will not register. But Henry, because I can go to school in shorts. Because I'm comfortable. You will not find me in corporate. I've done corporate now. I did Barclay card before in London. I was wearing suit up and down. Now I'm playing with children. I will now wear suits. I go on the swing, slide, trampoline. They jump on my back. But in Nigeria, they want me to wear suits. I can't conform to the pattern of that world. Though. Eh? I have to put scripture in that one. I can't. I can't do it. So I let admin do it. Mind the gap. Another scripture. 1 John 3, 18 says, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech alone, but with actions and in truth. It's not by saying, oh, I love you, baby. It's not even the love language of some children. When you say it, they're like, it's so normal. You know, when you can drop them in school, you go, they will leave your mouth hanging. Daddy and I were in the salon on, um, was it last week we were in the salon when we went, both of us went to go and do a pedicure. And then this lady had come to the salon with her daughter. And the girl was all clearly angry. You know, this woman, I had a feeling, had followed something I said on Instagram. I have a feeling, I'm not, not fat. Because I had, it was so coincidental. I just posted the fact that we should let our children do certain chores instead of roaming around, give them skills to learn. So she just said, oh, she's coming to learn this skill. She's coming to learn how to plate hair. You know, I told you. And the girl was just like. So the mom left, and the girl was just like, the mom was about to leave. She now went, all right, Valin, bye. The girl was like, just move back. As in real life story in the salon, there were like maybe 20 of us there. It was the most, in fact, that day, I we prayed, the ground will open by force. This was how embarrassing it was. The girl just moved back. What are they? She just moved back. Because they're like, don't hug me. This is just fake. The mother left. That girl did not do any hair plating. She was on her phone. She did not do nothing. Because the rapport is not there. The communication is missing. You don't even know if she wants to learn how to plate hair. You just think, okay, learn how to plate hair. You know, we are going to a jackpot. You'll be making money. 50 pounds. You'll be getting 50 pounds if you know how to plate hair instead of flipping burgers at McDonald's. Communicate with the child. The child may not be interested in hair plating, but might be interested in photography. May not be interested in hair plating, maybe cooking, maybe graphic design. But you, because you think so we can monetize, don't do it's by force. Our children must learn skills. I told her that day, what would you like to learn? She said she wants to be a, she wants to learn how to DJ. DJ. And I said, I don't need to understand. I don't need to, I know, I know, I know. I don't need to understand how to DJ. And then we got a teacher for her to do the DJ. And today, I can proudly introduce you to DJ Dade in the house. Eh? She's going to be at Waste Beach tomorrow, Sunday at 12 o'clock. Huh? She's doing it. Because she wants to go into media. And I said, media is muddy terrain. I won't say, ah. Oh, but the media, they are doing prostitution there. They are, are they children of God in the media? So why can't your own be there? Like, why do you think your own can make it as a child of God in the media? Why? Because we are projecting our fears. I need to rush now. I need to rush now. We are projecting our fears, our insecurities, our upbringing, our environments. All those things that have gone wrong in our life, we think it will go wrong in our children's life. But that is not how God works. We have the knowledge now, and the Bible says we should study to show ourselves approved 
A lot of people will not study. They will not come for conferences like this. Parenting conferences. I celebrate Elevation Church. Please, let's put our hands together. Any church that is doing something like this in this Nigeria of today, that is the church you should be in. Any church that does not care about your family life, knowing what is going on out there, ha, that church, you shouldn't be there. And I always thank God that God opens doors for me to be in churches and I don't hold a pastor title. I don't want it, but I want my gift to make room for me. In the family life industry, I want people to know that we can have great children of God that will stand out and make a difference. And God is going to make your children those children in Jesus' name. Now, if you speak to people in what they don't understand, how would they know what you are saying? Is that not simple? You might as well be talking to an empty space. That's the next slide. That is in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians 14, 9. If you see, I'm trying to get it to be very relatable. I've looked for different translations so that it can enter. If you speak to people in what they don't understand, many of us are speaking to children in what they don't understand, and you're telling them that when I was in school, they bullied me too. When I was in school, they used to beat me. I used to wash toilets. I used to sweep and go to the grass. He warning you, that is you. That is you. You are too emotional. You are too sensitive. You have to harden up and be strong. No, that is you. Let your children be themselves. Let them be themselves. Stop forcing them. And teachers do it too. Forcing children to be strong. Ephesians 6 verse 4 says, Fathers, but I will add, mothers, parents, do not exasperate your children. That will provoke. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. If we do not mind the gap, there are risks. Sadness, loneliness, depression, suicide, overeating. I've moved to, I don't know what slide I'm on now. Addictions, unhealthy competitions, especially amongst girls. A lot of Christians are raising toxic girls. Too much competition. Everything now is about hair and um, body augmentation. Christian children with such low self-esteem. I'm not opposed to body augmentation if you have a medical need. But at such young ages, tender ages, 18, 19, 20, your children are already augmenting their bodies. And I'm not talking about Instagram now. I saw it live in Lekki. In one single day, over 30 girls. I did not believe I was in Nigeria. People were even telling me that it's because I don't go out. That is everywhere. Yes, yeah, so that's how I did my face too. Anxiety, insomnia. Why we don't mind the gap is because we want to do things the way we were doing it. You know, our parents did it. And there's a saying that says, you cannot not learn except you don't want to learn. If you don't want to learn anything from all that I'm saying today, you will not learn anything. And if you want to learn something, you will learn something. Significant emotional experiences. You've been abused. You were raped. Something happened. They beat you. Then you want to do it. You, want, you can't trust your children. If they go out and are speaking to boys now, you will say, oh, they're speaking to boys. You, you want to sleep with them. I shall, you will put pepper in the bumble. You will beat them because that happened to you. You are still carrying it around and that's why you are getting it wrong. My daughter had a play date. Or a hangout, sorry. Not play date. They are cool. <laughs> you see, language. They don't do play dates at 16. No? A hangout. They had a hangout last week with, with um, friends from her school when they graduated. Most of Dade's friends are boys. And I said to Dade, I am very comfortable. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If I give you the go ahead, thumbs up. Because most of the girlfriends in her own circle, I'm not saying everybody in her school is bad, that she mostly toxic. Eventually two girls came, but mostly toxic. But the boys, even when she was sexually harassed in school, it was the boys that were saying, no, that they, they were standing and fighting for her. Let me even call their names. Should I call their names? Gomuna, Tobe, Bolu. Huh? They were standing there, AKB. Ah, if I forget AKB, I'll be in trouble. Those were standing for her. Whereas the girls were saying, eh, what did he do to you? Is it just because he said that you should calm your teeth down? What was there? How are we raising our girls? How are we raising our girls? Our, what happened to us is not going to happen to our children if we do it right. So stop saying that because something happened to you, anything your child does, you are so insecure, you project. The environment that you're living in. Some people are parenting in fears. In fear. You just need to balance. Some people are over-parenting. Their own is too much. Your child is going to school. They come with 10 bags. Oh, this is the cookie at 1 o'clock. This is the sweet at 2 o'clock. This is the pampas at 3 o'clock. This is the, you know, cuddle the head. It's too much. 
at some point is idolatry. Some parents idolize their children. You can't idolize your child. They are not God. No matter how cute and precious they are, they are still not God. Overpraising. Praise is good. Balance. Don't overpraise your child. Parentification. Some of you, when I was small, I was the one sweeping the house, cooking soup for the whole family of 13. Can you, come, come? you now want to do it to your children. You were abused. They just didn't know. It was you were abused. You didn't have a childhood. Your parents unconsciously abused you. And some of you, even till now, you are still paying school fees. You are still doing the work of the parents. They've even married. You are still paying the rent of, the, of that, your brother and his wife in their house. It can't finish. And it's your responsibility. But you don't know how it became your responsibility. They just sold you a lie. Now, I'm not opposed to family doing things together. Please, don't get me wrong. But I'm very pro parents doing the right thing. Why will you have ten children, five children that you can't cater for? Now, if you have a multiple births, okay, good luck. But you intentionally go and have it so that you can use children as a bragging right. It's a sin. Because how will you manage them? You give to house girl, give to house boy. There's ones who sexually abuse the children. Look at children. They're all around on drugs. I live in a very premium estate in, in, in Ikoyi the other day. I said that not to brag, but to say that I was walking along one day. And that's when I stopped walking uh, along that path. In a premium estate, oh, and a boy approached me and dropped his pants. As in, not, as in I was looking at his penis like this. In a premium estate, I ran to Estate gate. As in the kind of run I've never run before. By the time I got to Estate Gate, by the time they did all this research and everything, he has gone. Mental illness. In that same estate, a boy stabbed his neighbor. They didn't fight him. He just saw the guy and just stabbed him. Lucky that the man didn't die. Mental illness. We are underestimating what is going on. Some people don't even understand that it exists. Some of us, our children are cooking indomie in our Holy Ghost pot and putting weed inside. And you say, oh, you put vegetables. Oh, it's so healthy. Oh, my God. Oh, my child. You now post it on Instagram. Look at my child. Uh, my child in noodles. <laughs> Influenza. We can't be dismissive. You have to be there. You just, it's, parenting is hard work. If you are parenting now and you are not enjoying it, you are getting it wrong. There's never been a day where I felt stressed having that day. It's been a joy every day. Every day, I can tell you that. She's here, you can ask her questions after. It's been a joy every... In fact, now that she's going to big school, I'm thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do with my life? Huh? <laughs> but God always makes a way. So don't outsort your parenting. More suggestions, I will rush through it. Take feedback from your children. If they say, mommy, this your shoe looks funny. Now, you don't have to wear their own hip shoe or wear trainers or whatever. This. Have that conversation. Oh, mom, I'm not 15 years old again. You don't have to be wearing my knees. See, I can't even bend. I tell me to wear, you know, have that conversation. Don't say, I better go, go, go. Their opinion matters. Teach them. Let those things be teachable moments. Have bonding activities. Be silly. Pillow fights, run around, go talking, do gardening, cook together, give them hugs. It's not spoiling children. It's building that communication. Don't assume for them, please. Don't assume. They want to say something you already know. Oh, I know you will feel like eating jollof rice. And they're eating it for the seventh day in a row. I'm saying this one because it's on TikTok. That they sent it to me. But when my Nigerian parents bring another bowl of jollof rice... Get them involved. Teach them how to cook so that they can satisfy their own needs. That they can cook. If I'm not at home, business and if you don't want to eat what is there, cook what you want to eat. Because she has been empowered to do so. You don't have to be the one slaving. And we don't do house girl in our house. She has never had a nanny. So you will learn how to cook by force. So that if you don't want what I've given you, as long as the thing is at home, cook it and eat it. We'll put the rest in the fridge. Life is not that hard. Mutual respect. Some of you cannot leave the phone of your children. Yeah. See what you do. You say, yeah, I love you. There. 
You can't leave their phone. You are searching their cupboard. Searching, searching, searching. I found one song yesterday. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm going to post it after this. I said I must post that song. It's a Christian song. But the person was talking about what are people looking for in your life? As in they'll be looking, what are parents looking for? Anything you're looking for in your child's wardrobe or cupboard, you will find it. It means that there's no trust. It means that you don't trust that child. And if you don't trust that child, it's because something has gone wrong along the way. If somebody comes to me and says that they posted a nude picture, I will really be shocked. I won't say my child can never do that. I won't say that. Even though I feel she will never do that, I will not say that. But it will come to me as a shock. Don't ever say, because I know that parents come and defend children anyhow. Say, I don't think, I doubt my daughter will do that, but let us see the evidence. So if they say, if, you're, if you don't trust your child, that's when you will find all those things. Something has gone wrong along the way. They haven't taken up your values, and then maybe they're acting out, they're angry with you or something, and they will do all these things. Oftentimes for attention. Either the attention of yourself or other men or women out there. They will do it. Understand their style of doing things. I'll give the example of prayer. I'm sure many teen parents, when they're in church, you'll see mommy, all things are possible. <laughs> She'll even bend her, all things are possible. And that too, be doing cool. Uh, uh, singing. you now see that teenager. All things are... Do we know anybody like that? Ah, you know them. Or they'll go to like this inside church. Mommy is going crazy. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, daddy too is going. Then you now see mommy. Oh, they're Jonah. What's wrong with you? You know, kicking the child. You will see them. Yeah, I'll see on the back row in church. Back, back. So our church is similar. I go to Guiding Like Assembly. I sit at the back there, religiously. I like to sit there. When I sit there, I'm looking. They'll be, sing now, dance now. And the child is like, you need to understand their style. Because they're not shouting like you, does not mean they're not loving on God. Because the Bible says that those that worship me, they worship me in what? In spirit and in truth. It did not say they worship me in dancing and in shouting. It's good, but they will get there. Model it to them. They will get there. Right now, they're body conscious. Right now, they're self-conscious. Do it in such a way that your children will be proud of Jesus. You see, I say a lot of times when our children are in schools... We don't know that they're Christians because they are ashamed to say that they're Christians. Because you've not done it in an appealing way. You are still forcing them to say, Oh yeah, cram this Oh yeah. You can see now the Bible is in so many translations. Message Bible. I started with Message Bible. So many ways to connect with them. You can't say you're doing the same thing. Oh, you're diluting the word of God. You must hold a, a, a Bible, a real Bible. Mom, I've got it on my phone. No, it's not holy. It's, you must hold. Is it not a human being a printed Bible? Is it a human being a printed Bible? And in this one, if they don't understand something, they can check it. The concordance, 100 translations until they understand this. You, you see me there in the Bible. King James, blessed thou. Thou, you, are still, you don't even understand it. You've done Bible in a year, 50 times. You, don't, you still don't understand anything. But you are judging the one that has understanding. It's not by gra gra. We are too heavy on them. Give them opportunities to be responsible. Trust them a little bit. Be teachable, unpredictable, intentional about everything. Make time for each child. Understand technology to a basic level. Listen to understand. Calm down. Respect their struggles, social issues like bullying, sex, and all those things. Friendship is important to them. At some point, friendship is so important to them, it's more important than parents. It's more important. Parents need anger management and emotional intelligence. Anything else, get it on my YouTube channel because it's a lot. I still have a lot packed in here. Um, okay, actually, it's my last slide. It's my last slide. Be strong and courageous as parents. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. In Jesus' name, amen.